Right, this is take two of my introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Kotetsu and welcome back to my channel. So Games Workshop just sent me this, which is very exciting and in this video I want to unbox it and see what's inside. So thank you very much for Games Workshop for sending it to me. But something I have to really quickly say if you haven't worked that out already is my setup today is very awkward and it's not my usual setup due to my uh, computer being broken, but they're gonna fix that Wednesday, hopefully. But yeah, every time I touch the table, it's incredibly loud on the microphone. This microphone picks up absolutely everything. It's almost a little bit too sensitive, but yeah, the microphone's sitting on the table, so I do apologize for the fact that it's a little bit loud. I've tried to cushion it. But right, let's get on to the important thing. So this is the follow-on to Shadespire. And I'm kind of surprised they released a sequel to Shadespire as quickly as they did. When they first announced this, I was really quite taken aback. But I guess the more I think about it, when we've had the whole second edition of Age of Sigmar, they've changed the narrative of the Realm of Shaish so much that it kind of makes sense. You know, the first Shadespire box had the Stormcast Eternals and the uh, Blood Reavers, I think they were called, the Followers of Corn, whatever. They were obviously the face of the first edition, and now this ties in very neatly with the second edition, which is basically focused around the Sacrosanct Chamber and the Nighthorn. First thing you've got to say is just look at how nice that piece of artwork is on the box. I mean, they say the packaging is half the product, and while I completely disagree with that, I'm more interested with what's inside, Nevertheless, it's a nice piece of artwork. Something I love about this box, having not even opened it, is just how much stuff is in it. You've got the two warbands in here, so you've got your seven Thorns of the Briar Queen, and then you've got your three Evocators, if I'm saying that right, I always get it wrong, but Evocators will go with that. So you've got ten figures in here, and then you've literally got over a hundred cards, you've got the gaming boards, you've got the dice, it's absolutely jam-packed with stuff. So yeah, let's crack it open and have a little look at what's inside. For the £40 you spend on this box, you get a lot of stuff in there. And I guess if you think £40 is too much, you could go to an um, independent retailer and they're selling these for around £30. And for 30 quid for a self-contained, complete game, I think that's pretty good value for money. Right, what I'm not going to do in this video is talk about how to play the game, because Games Workshop have already basically made a really great video on uh, everything you need to know in that regard. I'll actually put a link in the description so you can go and find that if you're interested in playing it. But let's see, so we've got the rule book and the assembly instructions in here. Okay, so here's the rule book. Nice artwork. I can run you through the storyline quickly of uh, what Shadespire is all about, but it looks like they've got some new artwork in here. They've gone to a lot of detail, kind of fleshing the storyline out. Because to me personally, I played some Shadespire way back when it came out, and then I sort of forgot about it. Not because it's a uh, bad game or that it got boring quickly. It was more the fact that I was so busy making the YouTube videos that I didn't really have time to be... Uh, playing so much but one of the things I love most about it was the background and the storyline which I thought was really cool. Back then it gave us loads of tantalizing hints about Shaish and the realm of death and since then we have just found out so much more but we've got this new scatter template thing that's new to the game so yeah you've got your rule book This looks like a little quick start guide on how to play, which is quite good because I guess that's the uh, condensed version, how to put the balls together, etc. The assembly instructions, which we probably shouldn't need because they're all easy to build and should be nice and straightforward to put together. So much cellophane in here, is this really necessary? <laughs> But here's the board. I don't know if on my camera this is going to do it justice. It's obviously double-sided, so for each of them you've got a variety of different ways you can assemble it. So there's the two halves of the gaming board. Then you get onto all of the tokens and markers which I'm already accidentally popping out of the board. 
But you've got the new scatter templates, you've got 30 wound tokens, 46 double sided glory point tokens, 15 guard tokens and your activation tokens. So that's all of this stuff here. I mean loads of you guys probably know how to play the game already so I don't really need to go over that in too much detail. Then we get to the uh, easy build figures which are incredibly nice, very detailed and something I'm really happy about with these is that they look better than the ones that come in the Soul Wars starter set but if you have that set you have three of them. If you want to play them in Age of Sigmar properly you need five for a unit and now thanks to these I have six so I have my complete unit of evocators. They're really cool though, these are the uh, Stormcast Eternals Sacrosanct and they're called the Stormsire Cursebreakers and one of them is Rastus the Charmed, then Amis Dawnguard and the leader is Averon, Averon, I don't know, Stormsire. I don't know how clearly this is coming through on my camera, the lighting is absolutely terrible. This is what happens when you get to uh, winter sort of time in the UK, it becomes very dark and dreary. But yeah, they're nice models. I like the fact they've gone with one of the uh, face sculpts instead of a helmet because Games Workshop are doing a great job with those figures at the moment. Then we get to the Nighthaunt Warband, which are the Thorns of the Briar Queen, and there are seven of them. You've got the Everhanged, who is... Let's have a look. Where is he? He's this guy here, but he doesn't have his head on at the moment. We've got... Varklav the Cruel, who is some sort of jailer looking guy. I think that's part of him there because he's holding that little candle. Then we've got the Briar Queen herself and she is actually an incredibly cool model so I can't wait to paint her up. And then you just get four chain rasps as well. That's a nice little warband. Something I really love about these figures is the fact that you can take them into the uh, Age of Sigma game itself. The Briar Queen for example has got a really good war scroll. She's got minus three rend on three attacks that can hit and wound on threes. And she is, I believe, a Mirror Ghast Banshee, whatever one of those is. But yeah, for her and her unique unit of Chain Rasp, I think is 150 points. So I love the way you can take these as a unique unit within the actual Age of Sigma game. Then we get our dice, which you can use for attacking, defense, and now the magic dice as well, which is pretty cool. We get the cards in there as well. We get a sample chapter of Shadespire the Mirrored City, so I'll have to give that a little read and see what I think. Loads of jiffy bags, I mean, I guess that's for all the counters, but yeah. This was just the beginning, so teasing that stuff is coming and you can obviously play Age of Sigmar 2. We actually know an awful lot about what warbands are coming, but yeah, that is basically the box and then you just get the cards. So for example, if we just take a quick look at the Stormcast ones, get a nice piece of artwork on there from the uh, front of the box, but you get your characters with their wizarding level, their health, their defense, how far they can move and stuff like that. And then of course you have the inspired versions on the back. So that's Amis, Rastus and Averon, their inspired forms. Then we get onto a whole host of objective cards and stuff like that. So you get basically pre-made decks with your objective and power cards ready to go in the box and then later on if you wish to you can just choose to uh, mix things up and buy some of the other warbands and use the universal cards to improve things. So I won't go and look through all of those cards because I think that would make the video a little bit tedious. But in a nutshell, that is what is in the box. So, the figures are nice, it's a nice little set. Right, to finish up, let's just recap the story of Warhammer Underworld so far. So in Shadespire, these people found the uh, Shade Glass, and with that, they realised that they could live forever. And Nagash was really peed off about that, and he cursed them in this city, Shadespire. And they're basically stuck there for all eternity in this horrible mirrored city in Shaish. People can stumble across the city, wander into it unwillingly, and get stuck there forever. 
and all of the inhabitants are cursed and trying to basically escape. In Night Vault, it's basically set in the lower levels of Shadespire, so you're still in the same city, but Sigmar has taken an interest in Shadespire, and he's decided to send in the Sacrosanct to help people escape from this horrible cursed city. Naturally, Nagash is not too happy about that, so he unleashes his secret weapon, which is the Night Vault, and basically when Shadespire was in its better days, it had this horrible prison underground called the Night Vault where the most horrible spirits and creatures that you can imagine were sent. So what Nagash has done in response to Sigmar intervening with Shadespire is to open the Night Vault and out has come the Briar Queen and her retinue and that basically sets the stage for the game. That's an incredibly brief overview I'm sure in the actual 32 page rulebook there's far more storyline in there than that. But yeah, basically that's Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. I'm pretty excited to get stuck into this. It may end up being sidelined for a little bit because I'm a little bit more excited about my Beastmen at the moment. But nevertheless, I think for 30 to 40 pounds, depending on what you spend on this, I think it's good value for money. It's self-contained, it will keep you busy for quite a while. The Warbands and stuff they release later are always very good value for money as well. So yeah, that's my look at the box. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys really soon, hopefully with a fixed PC. But until the next one, I will see you guys really soon.